Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com. I am your GPR professor and I'm coming at you today with a follow-up video for one that we did, I don't know, a couple weeks back about different sizes for hyperbola, right? Why do hyperbola have different sizes? One of our uh, audience members had reached out and asked for me to go a little bit deeper into why different materials produce different sized hyperbola. And so that's what I'm going to address today right here. I'm going to clarify all of it. So this is why hyperbola fitting works in order to estimate depths. Because the hyperbola has got to be a certain geometry to have been created with a certain speed. So if you know, it's that geometry had to be created with a certain speed, which means you can then use that speed or velocity to uh, uh, estimate depths. But why does this work, right? How does that even work, right? Why do hyperbola, you know, are created with different sizes if it's the same target, same depth, same size uh, target, different materials? Why, if it's the wave is moving faster or the wave is moving slower, will the hyperbola be different? So. Consider these two scenarios. You have a buried target pipe, let's say. Buried pipe. Same size. I know that my drawing's a little bit off, but let's say same size. Same depth. But one is in sand, which you can see over here. Okay, one is in sand, and one is in clay. Which one will it move? Will the wave, GPR wave, move faster? in, it's going to move faster in the sand, which is going to move slower in, it's going to move slower in the clay. So let's say that the depth of this target is one meter, okay, one meter, one meter, when you're directly over it, okay, which means it's two-way travel distance is going to be two meters. Right, two meters. And let's say as you approach it, you're able to see it, right, before you get on top of your target, you're able to see it when uh, uh, in this distance, let's say, is two meters, and so it's four meters in, you know, in round trip, okay, so two meters, and then it's four meters round trip. Well, how fast does the wave move in sand? Let's say it's a little bit moist, and let's say it has an RDP, that's relative dielectric permittivity, of 9. An RDP of 9. That means that the velocity, right, so speed we'll say, equals 0.1 meters per nanosecond. Okay, it's 9, it's going to equal 0.1 meters per nanosecond. So how long is it going to take? when you're approaching it to hit the target and come back when it has a round trip of four meters. It's going to take uh, four divided by 0.1 equals 40 nanoseconds in two-way travel time, right? 40 nanoseconds from when the pulse comes out, comes down, hits the pipe and comes back, that's 40 nanoseconds. What about when it's directly on top of it? Well, that would be two, right, because that's round trip, divided by 0.1 equals 20 nanoseconds, right? So the difference then is, if you mind some, is a total of 20 nanoseconds. Now, let's jump over to our clay example. An RDP, let's say it's moist clay, it's going to be about 16. So if it's about 16, the speed will equal about 0 0.08 meters per nanosecond, which is 8 centimeters per nanosecond, right? 8 centimeters per nanosecond, 10 centimeters, right? Moving fast over here, then over here. So how long is it going to take to travel from antenna to target and back when it has a round trip of 4 meters? Well, let's take that again. That's Four divided by 0 0.08 is going to equal 50. So it equals 50. What about when it's directly on top of it? Well, that's going to be 2 divided by 0 
8, which is going to equal 25. So the difference between them is 25 nano nanoseconds. Right in here, it's uh, 20 nanoseconds. So there's a greater difference when you're in the clay from when you're approaching it compared to when you're on top of it. There's a greater difference in the clay than there is in the sand. It's a greater difference. 20 nanoseconds difference in two-way travel time, 25 nanoseconds difference. What does that mean? That means this is going to create a broader hyperbola, and this will create a more narrow hyperbola. So, let's show you, let me just go ahead and show you right, what, what I mean by that. <clears throat> go ahead and erase all this. Now let's say that this is our profile, right? This is, this is our actual GPR profile imaging what is act, what's going on here. This is reality, this is our GPR profile. So what do we have? Well, going down the side, we're gonna have, you know, let's say that this is the ground surface, so that's zero nanoseconds. Okay, now let's say we have uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Round trip here, right, was 40 nanoseconds. So that means the target's hitting, let's say, right here. When it's directly over it, it's hitting at 20. And then when it's past it, it's going to hit at 40 again. Okay? So that's our hyperbola in this circumstance. Now, let's see what happens over here. Now, these aren't that dramatically different. They'll be different. They're not as dramatic. It could have made it more dramatic, but these are pretty real deal examples. But same thing. So we got zero, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, okay? Over here, it was 50, 25, and 50, right? So what do we have? Pretty similar, but this one is a broader hyperbola. This one is going to be a more narrow hyperbola, okay? That's how it works. So in order for it to create a hyperbola like this for a target that, that size at that depth in that medium, in, clay, in, in moist clay that has an RDP of 16, it's got to be that. That's what it has to be. So when it gets fit on your GPR unit or in your post-processing software, it can tell that it was moving at that speed because that's the only way you can produce that. Because if it produced this over here, it's not moving at that speed. It's not moving at 0.08 meters per nanosecond. It's moving at 0.1 meters per nanosecond. And that's why it's broader. Okay? Right? Difference of 20 nanoseconds here between, you know, compared to these versus 25 nanoseconds compared to these. Okay? 20 versus 25. Broader versus Narrower. That's the difference. That's how hyperbola fitting works. That's how hyperbola are different sizes. Same target, same depth, same size, different hyperbola sizes in two different materials. That's how the calculation is done. Okay? That's how you can simulate what's going on below the surface. That's how you can backtrack out of getting a relative dielectric permittivity. Right? If you don't know the dielectric permittivity, well, now you know how fast it's moving. Because you mapped it, you can say, ah, moving at 0.08 here. Now we can go back and see what 0.08 equals as far as relative dielectric permittivity. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this helped clear some things up for, for you if you were a little concerned about it. Again, I appreciate uh, uh, the audience member who reached out and asked for a little bit more depth on this issue when we talked about differences in hyperbola sizes. Again, there are four reasons why hyperbola vary in size. 
I'll you know put the video in the uh, link to the, in the description or in a in a, in a card here on, on uh, uh, the video. Uh, so you can a link will be somewhere, so you can you can uh, check that one out. But this goes further, much further on one reason why there are differences. Um, if you felt like this was helpful, if you know somebody else who might benefit from this, please share this around. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Help us grow. Help us grow the community. Um, put in the comments below if you were ever confused about this process. Okay? Why the hyperbola are different sizes in different you know, materials but for the same exact target at the same exact depth. If you were ever confused about that, put it in. If this was helpful to you, put that in the comments below. Uh, let me know, you know uh, um, what you thought the reason was in the past. Hop over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in. We will send you these videos every single week. I appreciate you watching. Uh, it really means the, the world to me. I hope that this is all helpful to everybody who's out there. Thank you so much. I wish you nothing but the best. See you soon.